Fast HTML is a new framework for building and rendering HTML web apps in Python. It uses HTML-like naming conventions and syntax, making it intuitive for developers familiar with HTML. I'm going to walk you through how to build this Fast HTML web app. On the back end, it pulls and pre-processes data from an API. And on the front end, it displays a data visualization alongside a microblog. Here, I've pulled data from an NFL statistics API to visualize the cumulative total amount of offensive yards by team and added short summaries for the past few weeks of the NFL season. But this could easily be adapted to intake and display other types of data, such as financial stock data, environmental monitoring data, or even data on personal fitness goals, while also allowing the possibility of logging notes or commentary alongside the data visualization. We'll begin by importing the following libraries, OS for file handling, Markdown for HTML conversion, Pandas for data manipulation, Fast HTML Common and Fast Core Basics for Fast HTML components, Plotly Express for data visualizations, and NFL Data Pi for NFL data. You can install all of these libraries into your Python environment through pip install. Next, we'll initialize the Fast HTML app using the Fast App function. This creates our main app object and a router for mapping routes to our app. The router RT is how we define different pages for our web app. In this project, we only have a home page, but you could easily add more routes if you wanted to. Now, let's get into the structure of the blog entries. Each entry is saved as an MD file, where the content can be written in markdown syntax or just regular plain text. These markdown text files are stored in a subdirectory called posts. And what the load posts function does is reads in all of these files, arranges them in reverse chronological order so the most recent post is on the top, and then switches the content from Markdown to HTML using the Markdown library. It also extracts the title from each file name, then formats it nicely and stores everything in a list of dictionaries. This workflow allows for each blog post to be easily rendered and displayed in the web app. This next section is where the data pulling and wrangling happens laying the groundwork for our interactive data visualization. We start by importing data from the ongoing NFL season. This data set is incredibly detailed, but we're going to focus on getting statistics just for rushing and passing plays. Next, we group the data by team and week to calculate the total yards gained for each play type. We then combine these statistics into one data set, pivot it for easy tracking, and calculate cumulative yards over the season. Finally, we prepare the data for visualization using Plotly Express, creating an interactive chart that highlights each team's offensive performance in rushing and passing throughout the season. The chart is then converted to HTML using the toHTML function, which is crucial for embedding it into our fast HTML web app. On a broader scale, this process of data wrangling and visualization is highly adaptable. You can use your own data sets, whether for sports, finance, or any other field, and generate interactive charts or tables. You could even adapt this code to intake real-time, updating data sources. What is essential, though, is that the final output, whether a table or a graph, needs to be converted to HTML. This step is crucial for embedding the content into fast HTML. OK, so at this point, we've created functions to read in the blog posts as well as to import and graph our data. We can now put everything together and define the content layout for our home page. The home page is configured using the RT decorator, where the forward slash denotes the root URL of our web app. The home function starts by calling the load post function and the generate offensive yards chart function and stores the results as objects for later use in the content layout. Underneath, we dynamically construct the content of the web app using Python in a way that's equivalent to writing HTML directly. For instance, when we create article elements, it's just like defining article tags in HTML. The h1 tag serves as the post title styled with a class post title, mimicking how you'd use h1 in HTML. Similarly, the div element wraps the post content, and not str ensures that this HTML content renders as intended. This Python syntax mirrors the familiar HTML structure, and making it easy for developers to understand and work with. So the first part of the content layout loops over each post and saves it into article posts in the same structure. Next, let's walk through everything that happens from the return statement onward. The return statement here sends the assembled HTML content to the browser as a complete and dynamic web page. But this is also where we assemble the final layout in one step. First, HTML wraps the entire page content, serving as the root element of our HTML document. Second, the head section then defines the metadata and styles for our page, for which we can set the page title that will be shown in the browser tab 
and set a CSS style sheet from an external source. And just like an HTML document, we can also set custom CSS arguments. The styling here defines how elements like the header, container, posts, and chart are styled. I fixed the header at the top of the page, used a Flexbox layout to organize the content, and styled the blog posts and chart separately. This setup allows the blog entries to be scrollable while keeping the chart fixed on the side. Finally, we can set up the body of the page where we define the main content. It starts with a top-level div that serves as the layout container. The next line, the H1 section, is the header of the page, which I previously styled to remain fixed at the top in the custom CSS style section. Next, the star before article posts in the div unpacks the article post list we previously created, placing each individual article element and its previously specified layout into the div. This way, all the blog posts are inserted in one go, making the code cleaner and more efficient. The blog entries are designed to scroll independently, while the chart, embedded in the adjacent div using not str chart HTML, remains fixed in place. This setup is made possible by the Flexbox layout, which ensures that the scrolling and fixed elements are organized side by side. To wrap everything up, we use the serve command at the end of our code. This command will launch our fast HTML web app, making it accessible and ready to be viewed in the browser. At this point, the code is complete, and we can go to our terminal or command prompt, then go to our project directory and type python fast.py or whatever other name you have given the file. If all goes well, we can copy the local server link localhost 5001 in our browser and view the final web app. This is just one way to use fast HTML, but the options for presenting data are extensive. There's a lot of room for further experimentation and development, whether it's for the purpose of creating a dashboard, an interactive blog, or some other type of data-driven application. The code for this project is in the video description below. And if you found this useful, drop a comment, like, and subscribe to the DeepCharts channel for more tutorials on machine learning, AI, and data science topics.